Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 22. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, here we go. Uh, Fair Lady Z versus RX. So we're going to be taking Mazdas versus... Fair ladies, I'm obviously taking the fair lady, because why wouldn't I? Starting off with Suzuka West, moving on to Sebring, Silverstone, and finishing off with Sunset Peninsula. Let's get cracking. All right, here we go. Let's get going. Rum, 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 rum. Oh! oh, that's beautiful. Room is your friends ever. Yeah, that's fair enough. See, the funny thing is, though, so you know how I was saying, like, oh, he he said that I was trying to change him and change how he behaved, and I was like, well, yeah, I fucking am because he was being a dick to me. <laughs> I asked him to stop taking the piss, <laughs> like. That's not an unreasonable request. Social media was clearly a mistake. 100%. I think, though, I think publicly accessible social media was a mistake. So people being able to comment freely, be able to interact freely, that kind of stuff, that was the mistake social media made. They could have done it so much better where people make videos and you enjoy the videos. You go on and watch it as if it was like television, something like that. And I think TikTok made everything worse. I'm going to keep pointing out TikTok. Because TikTok gave some absolute morons the power to just become a content creator. Yeah. By all means, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, maybe Instagram can stay because that's not too unreasonable. But Twitter can go. TikTok can go. Anything other than really YouTube, even Reddit can go. That's weird. But, you know. But yeah, going back to the main point, like... I found out so much shit afterwards that was just absolutely diabolical. Like... This guy, while supposedly being, like, bros and shit, was spreading lies behind my back. And I was just like, what? Like, I genuinely had screenshot proof and all that shit. It's just ridiculous. But yeah, like, I've blocked him now. I've blocked a lot of people that were fairly toxic. Just so I didn't have to deal with them. And so far, I've been feeling a lot better. Because I haven't had to deal with their shit. Like, as much as they want to bring other people down, they can do that. But it's not going to be towards me. Not anymore. Actually, I probably shouldn't say that they can do that. Because that's not a good impression. You shouldn't do that anyways. But they're definitely not going to be doing it to me anymore. So... <laughs> yeah I mean people have their bad days don't get me wrong you can have a bad day but not if your bad day the only way to make your bad day good is to take the piss out of other people and make them feel like shit that's not how you go about it like by all means I'm all up for a joke and, like, I'm one of those people that's fairly laid back when it comes to jokes as well. Like, you can go quite far with a joke with me. But if you make the same joke over and over again, it doesn't become a joke. It's more a statement. Like, why are you making the same joke over and over again if it's not... If it's fake? Why would you keep pointing something out if it's fake? You know? That's kind of the message that you end up then getting if someone makes the same joke about you over and over again. So when you ask them to stop... 
you kind of expect him to maybe stop, you know. And especially when, like, I'm someone who's reasonable. Like, you make a joke, that's fine. I'm not going to rip your head off because you've made a joke. Because that's what's wrong with the internet. I'll agree with you. Like, I can make jokes that go too far. But I expect someone to give me the decency of saying, that joke went too far, tone it back, and still show me respect with that. And I will, by all means, then say, apologies, won't make the joke again. And I do the same with everyone else. I'm like, come on, that was too far. Let's take it back a notch. I expect the common decency of you to say, okay, I respect that, won't make the joke again. And that's fine. I'm also not saying, oh, you can't make that joke towards other people. Like, by all means, make the joke towards other people. If they're not fine with it, they'll tell you to stop. You know? And that's what the internet should be. We've got a lot of people who will say, get offended on other people's behalf, which makes the internet shit. And we've also got a lot of people who will get offended on their own behalf, like, get offended at something, ask for someone to not make that joke, and then they'll say, oh, it's just a joke, bro. And it's like, it's just ridiculous. You're shown that you're a matured person and not a spoiled kid mentally. Yeah, exactly. Like, at some point you've got to... I mean, I've been doing, like, Twitch streaming and stuff like that for quite some time, so I've already had the internet maturity, if that makes sense. But, like, these people would just rip into you, take the piss out of you, and then expect you to get on with your day and not acknowledge... Oh, shit, I nearly crashed. And sort of, like, not acknowledge that they've said something shit to you. And just imagine, like, oh, it was just a joke. It's funny. No, it's not a joke. Don't make it again. Oh, you're changing me. Fuck off. <laughs> like, this is stupid. Like, that, that genuinely is what got me about that whole situation. It was not the fact that he was getting defensive. It was the fact that he twisted it to be my fault. Saying that I was changing him. Is the one thing that pissed me off so bad. I, by all means, I don't, I don't give two shits anymore. But you know that is the one bit that still pisses me off. And again, I'm someone who gives people second chances. So this guy is taking his first chance. So he's up for a second chance. But if he wants a second chance, he's definitely got to fucking apologize for that comment. <laughs> like, I'm a fairly laid back guy, like I said. But I'm also not going to give you a second chance if you can't admit what you did was wrong. So, 729, not bad. I will take that, 14,500 credits. And we got a 30% discount on springs and dampers upgrades by Jick Magic. Yeah, let's go. Right. See, bring. Let's go with the Nissan. The fair lady. What an engine. What an engine. No other way to put it other than wow. Oh, and we are now playing uh, Graphics' new album. Uh, I think it's called Half-Life, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> yeah, a bit of a cough there. Woohoo! bit of uh, drifting there. We're well, not Half-Life 3. Because uh, Half-Life 3 will never exist. As you know, Valve hate the number 3. I feel alive. 
And plus, he hasn't made Half-Life 1 and... Well, he's made Half-Life 1, but not 2 yet, so... <laughs> Love can't counter 3. Oh, yeah, because technically Half-Life 3 is Half-Life Alex. But by that point, they can't call it 3. I genuinely think they're going to make a new Portal game at some point, because that... Honestly, so many people have been asking for it. And there's been some rumours going around that there may be a new portal in development. Obviously, like, they had that Aperture Desk job. Actually, that might have been what ended up coming out then. As part of that rumour. That might have been what the rumour was about. Because I remember seeing it about six months ago or something like that. And it was like a big thing. The people were like, there's going to be a new Portal game. That could have been it. But, if they are making a new Portal, and that wasn't the Portal game they were on about, and it was like an actual Portal game that they were hinting towards, it'll probably be called like Portal... The Third Dimension or something like that. Like, they won't actually specifically call it Portal 3. Because who fucking does that in Valve? Yeah, because a lot of the money that they make isn't actually from Steam's own games. A lot of the money that Steam makes is from sales of other games. And because of the fact... I really want a store. Like, the thing is, Epic Games is just intrusive as hell. Like, by all means, I would be more inclined to use Epic Games if it was easily integratable with one platform but the thing is none of these allow an option to just use one software like by all means if epic games can make a deal with steam that says you get your library buy it through epic games but you can download it through steam if you'd like so you could use it on a steam deck for example something like that but unfortunate <laughs> this is why epic games really pisses me off because the creator, like, the CEO of Epic Games is such a, like, oh, I'm doing it for the people kind of guy. Yeah, it's got a lot missing compared to Steam, so it's not a great store to buy stuff. But it is, I think, probably third best, and I think the second best store page after that is... If, uh, maybe fourth because I think it's close between either Ubisoft Connect for me because Ubisoft I haven't had any problems with or um, GOG.com Go good old games is actually really good but uh, yeah Epic Games CEO is like oh we're fighting this court case so that we can make our V-Bucks cheaper so we don't have to and all that stuff. Really? I think it's just a cover-up for the fact that he's quite a self-centered, major egoed prick. To be honest. Like... I don't know. I think that's harsh. I think that's quite harsh, actually. I'll take that back. But... Like... Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, you think... Was there any need to remove Fall Guys from the Steam store? Or Rocket League from the Steam store? Was there any need? The game could go free to play. They wouldn't need to delist the store page. They wouldn't need to remove it. Why do they remove it? To get you to use the Epic Games store launcher instead. And to be honest, it would cost them less to have it on Steam. Sometimes, it's a lot easier to install stuff for, through Steam. It's the same story as if someone wants just one store and they're like, Oh, Epic Games does some good deals and has the games that I want. I'm going to buy all my games through Epic Games. Fucking do that. Get your Rocket League on Epic Games instead of Steam. Or spin your car out 
like a baboon. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and you? Get the fuck out of here too. Yeah, exactly. They're keeping updating the games, right? I didn't get Rocket League on Steam, but it doesn't bother me because I'm not a fan of Rocket League. So I won't ever play it. I've uninstalled it off of Epic Games as well. So I'm, I'm not playing it. But something like Fall Guys, I'm glad I got it on Steam before they delisted it. Because it's delisted now. You can't get Fall Guys on Steam anymore. Um, but it means that I can download it through Steams. Fall Guys is directly blocked. Fall Guys not blocked. Fall Guys works perfectly fine on Steam. You just can't get it anymore. Just run away now. Just run away now. Like, by all means, I'm I'm happy that they've gone free to play for Fall Guys because other people get to enjoy Fall Guys because Fall Guys is a pretty enjoyable game um, when it's with friends. Obviously, on its own, I wouldn't play Fall Guys. But with friends, it's actually quite enjoyable. But again, the problem with Fall Guys and with a lot of Epic Games' things is they'll... They twist stuff around so easily. So, Fall Guys, I spent £16 on, okay? What do I get for free out of that £16 purchase I made to buy the game? I get a battle pass, and that's it. So, I get, what, two skins for free. And then I have to play the game to actually get the stuff, right? Right? That is not worthwhile, my 16 quid that I spent. And for a... To go to a free-to-play model where then... For you to actually earn stuff is now monetary only. All of the good skins in there is money only now. You have to spend cash or you have to level up in the battle pass to get the free stuff that's in there. In which case you have to save that to buy the next battle pass. So technically speaking, now if I want a skin in that game, I've got to pay money. Even though... I've already spent money on a game that had the option for you to get skins for free in it. Like, that's why I hate Epic Games. They're not making it easy for you to like them at the moment. Alright, here we go. Silver Stone. Let's go. I will buy one Euro game for you then. <laughs> oh. Well, I, like like I say, like every bit of support on the channel is greatly appreciated. Whether it's supporting through merch sales, supporting through um, getting stuff via Eniba. Which, actually, Eniba is probably one of the easiest ways for you to support because literally does not cost you anything extra and you get some extremely fucking cheap games out of it as well so that's always a bonus um humble bundle there's a humble bundle link as well if you're into buying your humble bundles that's also another great way of showing support as well oh five percent of one euro five percent of one euro is still five cents that's still something towards it Especially as the stuff that gets bought on Eniba, I pretty much put straight back into Eniba to buy more games for stream. So pretty much that just helps me to buy content to then stream. So it's always definitely a supporting factor. Because I buy all my games through that website anyways. It's cheaper. Cheaper! Lovely. Oh! Yeah, no, that's not gone as well as I wanted it to. There you go.
<laughs> Are there actually DLCs for the Crew 2? I didn't even think the Crew 2 had DLCs. I thought all the content was included, but they just made you pay a shit ton for, like, crew credits and shit. There's some actual physical DLCs. I did not know that. Oh, yeah, because they got the um, season pass, don't they? Oh! Let's keep going. Yeah. Why the fuck's it playing fucking YouTube videos? <laughs> My PC's like, feel the connection! And I'm like, nope. I'll pass on that, thank you. Do you know, the one thing that confuses me about YouTube advertising big time at the moment is the fact that, right, I bought a phone contract back in January, mid-January. So I bought a new new data package. Not even a new phone with them, just the data, right? And now, ever since then, every other YouTube video I watch has a fucking Vodafone advert. Not even joking. Like, I know they're personalized to be based on your, like, search history and shit like that. But, like, come on. I'm already paying for a contract. Why would I be wanting to look for a new one? And the funny thing is, when I'm coming to look for a new contract, those adverts are going to stop. Guaranteed. So what they're doing, I mean, I don't blame them. They're just wasting money on advertising. Because it's advertising to the wrong people. But. It's money for me. Because technically speaking, those advertisings go. Anyways. Didn't get Japanese ads. Are you sure you're not using a VPN then? Or some form of hidden VPN that. Like, Androids normally have a hidden VPN. I actually planning on um, upgrading my Google Drive contract to like a one terabyte thing that comes with um, a VPN package. See what that's like. Because I would not mind to be able to go to America on my phone and be able to sit there and watch American Netflix and shit like that. YouTube in America is amazing because all the British shows are on American YouTube. But they're all blocked in the UK, which is fucking dumb. Actually, it makes sense because the only way they can make money from the, that content in the UK, they can make more money if they force you to watch it on, like, Sky and whatever. But they can't do that in other countries because it's not available there, so they'll take the measly revenue. Anyways, that's besides the point. This brings you to an early ban in games using VPNs. Yeah, so UK shows... Uh, UK shows are blocked um, in the UK because we've got um, a company in the UK, a very big company um, called Sky. I don't know if you've heard of Sky Sports and like Sky F1 and that. A lot of the... Um, so when you look on F1 TV, all the coverage and commentary on F1 TV, the application, is all done by Sky Sports. Um... I don't know if you know Crofty. And it's lights out and away they go. That's Sky Sports. Um, they're... Honestly, like, I understand. Sky is basically the biggest rip-off in the world. I'm gonna be honest. They are a company that is built to rip people off. Straight up. Like... 
they charge about £22 a month for you to be able to watch Formula 1. Just one TV channel. Okay. If you want to watch any of the other sports channels, it's like £18 a month for the football one, some other channels. But what's even worse is to buy all the sports channels. Say you want to fancy two sports, right? The cheapest way is to buy all the sports channels. And that's fucking 40 quid a month. And that's just on for the sports channels on top of your main contract, which you have to pay for, by the way. So if you're looking at sports channels and your normal TV shows, probably looking at about 50, 60 quid a month to be able to watch that. It's ridiculous. Not bad. 13,500. I'll take that. All right, here we go. I would name myself that idiot. <laughs> I'll name myself fucking Spanner. That's probably what. That, that also a reason um, <laughs> why my logo is a Spanner. Because I am a Spanner. I could have gone for anything for Mechanic CG. To go with that logo. Could have gone with a, a Jack. Could have gone with um, a car tire. Could have gone with tread marks. Could have gone with anything. And I chose a spanner. Because it represents me being an absolute baboon. <laughs> and it works. It makes sense. <laughs> oh, look at that spanner over there. Also, yeah. If, if you're wanting to change stuff up, by all means... I'm still a strong believer, though, right? And I've made this point before. Um, for people who make content and stuff like that, content creators, music artists, anything like that, if your content changes dramatically from what you originally were intended for, that's when you need to rebrand and re name your channel and remake it and everything. Start out with a new thing. Whatever. And I'm a strong believer of that because I <laughs> genuinely the amount of artists that I listen to and I'm like this is a completely different genre of music that I've signed up for. I don't like it and I can't listen to this one artist because it mixes in with too many different genres and I'm constantly skipping their tracks. At that point I think they should make a new band. Or a new band name. By all means, they go on tour together as the two band names. But they obviously start off with their earlier songs with that genre as that band. And then a different band. Shouldn't be changing dramatically like that. And it's similar with like content creation. If you're someone who does like racing content like me. And then all of a sudden just went to doing first person shooter COD clips then I think you need to rebrand and change your channel. I know it sounds like a harsh thing, and, like, a lot of creators will go, no, you should be who you want to be. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Be who you want to be. But you're still not the same person when you've changed it completely. Like, by all means, change. I'm all for it. But if you're changing, you're changing all the way. You've, and that's what you should do. Completely change. Have an overhaul. Don't pretend to be, like, your old self. And make new stuff that's nothing related to your old self. You know, if I turned around and was like... I was even contemplating it. Because I have obviously been doing racing content for God knows how long. I started doing... A lot more just random games here and there. But I was still focusing on racing content every so often. So I was like, Mechanic CG can still be relevant. Although the relevancy is fading away. And I contemplated about a year into that phase of changing my channel name. And rebranding to something else. But I was like, no, I'll stick by it. Because I'm still a car fan, right? 
And then a couple of months later, I then just basically went back to doing a majority of racing games. And that's fine. It, it wasn't deviating too much to the point that I was straying from my original roots. But then now, and I, the past few months, have also been questioning whether I rename my YouTube. Obviously, my Twitch, I'm still doing a lot of racing content, so that should stay as Mechanic CG. But I was genuinely thinking of contemplating whether I'd change the YouTube to something Forza related. Because I've pretty dramatically changed. Well, not dramatically. It's still racing games. So, technically speaking, I could still get away with calling myself Mechanic CG on YouTube. But I'm more focused towards U uh, Forza content now. To the point that I should probably rename it to a Forza related name. I don't think is ideal, and after thinking about it for a month or so, I decided I'm going to stick with Mechanic CG, but, like, even I was questioning it whether I should have done it, but I could get away with it because I'm still doing racing games, so it still goes within my brand, but if your brand changes, you can't identify as the same person anymore, you are a different channel. You're a different being, a different entity, a different whatever you want to call it. Like, a, a killer example of this, right, is Paramore, okay? If anyone's heard of Paramore's old songs, chances are you love their old songs and fucking hate their new ones, right? And I am a... Genuinely, like, I think Paramore, even if they created a new artist profile, became something new, then they should have done that. They already had the backing of their old band anyways, that if any people wanted to listen to those kind of songs, they could go and listen to that and go to that page and be with that artist and enjoy that artist for who they are, not for their old self. You know. And I understand people, like... It's just the fact that if you completely change, it makes no sense why you're holding up back... By holding on to your old name. You think, right? Pendulum. Absolutely brilliant band. That we all, all us racing game fans know? Well, plot twist, Pendulum technically did but didn't split up because two of the band members of Pendulum went on to make Knife Party. So the people of Knife Party was basically half of Pendulum anyways. But they made a new band because it was a new genre of music. It was completely different tunes. But instead of being under the Pendulum name, where the genres would clash, because they were identifying as something different, they just made a new band called Knife Party. And that was a good way of doing it. And you've seen multiple times Knife Party and Pendulum both tour at the same places at the same time. I think there was one in 2016 that was really good because they did one a song with like Tom Morello or something. And that was a proper, proper good um, show. And they did like, I think they did Knife Party first and then moved on to Pendulum. Not 100% sure which way around it was. But they did, both bands were at the same place doing the, their music. I love how I've ranted about that for eight minutes, non-stop. That is one of the first times I've been able to do that. <laughs> but yeah, like having multiple accounts, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you look at all these big YouTube channels, like these tech channels that are going into different brands and they make dedicated channels so there are other things because they know the point that I'm making is valid. They have to do that because if they put that content on their main channel, it messes with it. 
Which is why I'm focusing on Forza so much, because if I focus on this one thing, I'm going to start to slowly grow from this one thing, and I'm going to focus on it more. And then I'm going to move to WRC and fuck it all up, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, I haven't told anyone about that plan. Uh, once I finish all of these Forza games, I want to do all of the WRC games, so WRC 1 through to 10, and then Generations, when that comes out. So, fun. There we go, that's that one done. Lovely. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>